Oh, good to see you, my friend, Dr. Feroz. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Excellent, excellent. I'm doing good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's very important that um, people like you showcase their work, their cause for environment and you know your unconditional support to the communities to enhance their ecosystem and um, you know their livelihoods it's fantastic welcome ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining us thank you for joining and being here for dr feroz's um, uh, presentation on karbi anglong and kaziranga ecotourism and uh, you know to know more about his work it's absolutely wonderful and thank you a lot for all your support that you're going to give them today and you listen to Dr. Feroz's, you know, uh, presentation. So, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't want to take too much time um, waiting for others to arrive. They will keep arriving as we go along. And right now, we've got lots of people stepping in. Good evening. Good evening, Amitji. Good evening, Janaki, Rekha, Amit, Rohan. Lovely, Rohan. Good to see you. Uh, Karen, oh, uh, welcome, welcome, Mahendra, welcome, Amanda, Mahesh, Deepak, many friends are here, um, Dr. Feroz, and they all are here to, to listen to you. I'm so pleased. Oh, our friend um, uh, Bully is also here. Great. So let me start with introducing Dr. Feroz to you first. So Dr. Feroz Ahmed has been associated with uh, Aranyat since 1994 as a volunteer and subsequently started managing conservation projects from 1999. Dr. Ahmed has received several capacity building and professional trainings in conservation research and conservation project management. He's an avid researcher and has discovered several new species of amphibians, including orang sticky, uh, sticky frog, Asmi's balloon frog, Asmi's cascade frog. His team works across the eastern Himalayas and the northeast region of on multiple groups of species and conservation livelihood interventions. Since 2000, he has developed, managed, and co-managed over 70 conservation projects with significant contribution to biodiversity conservation in the northeast Indian region. Currently, he's leading Manal's Tiger Conservation Program that integrates conservation livelihoods, education, and law enforcement to secure tiger, prey animals, and habitats through community participation. He also leads the participatory natural resource management program at the Kaziranga Karbi Anglung landscape of Assam that focuses on conservation livelihoods and NRM by the indigenous Karbi community. He has been leading the Tiger Research Conservation Division of Ar uh, Aranyak since 2007 and strengthening conservation of tigers, prey animals and habitats in this region. Dr. Ahmed has received awards and honors in recognition to his impactful contribution to conservation. He's got Sanctuary Wildlife Service Award in 2006, Carl Zayas Wildlife Conservation Award in 2010. He has published two field guides, technical reports, and over 40 scientific communication. Dr. Ahmed has been member to the national level statutory conservation policy bodies like the Forest Advisory Committee and National Tiger Conservation Authority of the Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India. Wow, that's that's really illustrious um, uh, you know, introduction of yours. Let me quickly introduce myself as well. I am Mohit Agarwal. I'm an experiential ecotourism specialist, and I am the founder of Asian Adventures, which is a 26-year-old travel company. It is India's number one uh, bird-watching company. It's on a large mission to save elephants for the corridors, uh, also free the Himalayas of plastic waste, help small wildlife NGOs, and also save and preserve the ancient Himalayan shrines. So my, my personal interest is to bring eco, the concept of ecotourism to the travel fraternity and to ecotourists and to tourists to convert them into ecotourists. So I think this is important for me personally to 
have people understand the concepts of ecotourism, what it entails, what are the methods, and how deep is this science? And this can be very well understood by um, by following the examples of um, uh, you know the the uh, stalwarts like Dr. Feroz. So so over to you, Dr. Feroz. I will shut my screen and my mic off for you to take this on. Thank you. Oh, sorry. sorry. Thank you, Mohit, uh, for this uh, big, uh, illustrious introduction, which is not actually uh, probably me, but uh, I don't know how, how you have been, uh, you know, how, how you spoke all those. But anyway, I'm a very small, uh, ground, I mean, working on the ground uh, person. I love to work with the uh, people who are on the ground and who are actually um, helping all of us to protect uh, the habitat, the species and the ecosystem, the communities particularly, and the frontline forest staff, as well as uh, uh, big teams uh, placed all over places uh, who are involved in different conservation work. Um, today's presentation, uh, as, you, uh, as you know, I'll just start the slides quickly. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on speaking something else, but I will quickly introduce uh, you to Aranya, which is a non-profit based in Guwahati in Assam. And the Aranya works across Northeast India, uh, but we mostly focus on areas uh, close to protected areas uh, because of the priority of protecting the uh, fringe areas as well as the protected areas in this region. And uh, as uh, you have already learned at I personally uh, lead a program called Community-Based Natural Resource Management Program within INUC, which looks into um, communities' involving, involvement in conservation of land and forests and ecosystems uh, in the Kirby Hills. Um, uh, that we started uh, on about 30 square kilometer area, which is next to Kadiranga World Heritage Site. Uh, this area is very important uh, from ecosystem point of view and uh, security point of view, uh, conservation or ecological security point of view for Kajiranga National Park. Uh, just quick statistics. Uh, in fact, in the monsoon period, this 30 square kilometer area, which releases uh, about 900 lakhs liters of water per day, fresh water into the Kajiranga National Park which is availed by the rhinos, the swamp deers, the buffaloes, uh, elephants, and all other animals living there. Um, this is not only only river or streams feeding Kaziranga. There are many others, but I'm talking about this particular river called Kohora River, Kohora River, where we are working. And uh, in winter, when there is the lean period, there is no, I mean, less water across the park. This river drains about 300 lakh liter per day which is a huge amount of money for ecosystem security, water security of the park. And given that Arendna uh, has been working in this landscape for quite some time, uh, uh, quite a long time actually, and then this program, this natural resource management program is a very new program. We started this program in around 2017 and started working on uh, in the villages from 2018. Given this short period, uh, we are working with communities, which is, uh, which we need to be you know, strengthened for a long, long period of time. We have observed that the communities are very welcoming to our, our interventions, our proposals, whatever we have been proposing to them. And some of them, those proposals has already been accepted and we are moving forward with good speed. We hope we will be able to work there for a longer period of time and show some good conservation models that can be replicated across Northeast India with little bit of uh, adaptation so that it fits the local community in anywhere uh, in this region, as well as the local ecosystem. So I'll tell you a quick story. The Kohora River, the name Kohora, actually is a, is a name given at a later stage, uh, around the uh, 1950s. So before that, even up to 1970s, the, the river uh, used to be known as Kindu Langso River. Kindu Langso means, in Karbi language, Kindu is rhino and Langso is a stream. So over the period of time, because the tribal communities has uh, less um, 
less opportunity to speak for them. The name of the river got changed because of the uh, other communities who are who are putting names on these rivers. So the Kindu Langso River becomes Kohora River. We try to in infuse this name again back into the stream, into this river called Kindu Langso. So although I will be speaking Kohora River at number of times because of the familiarity of the term with with uh, with most of you. Um, I will I will now go to the next slide. Okay, this is this is actually Kaziranga National Park. The green cover is uh, with a with a sharp boundary you can see, and and this blue line you can see these are the streams here, and a small area of thirty square kilometer is the Kindu Langso River Basin or Kohora River Basin. This whole area drains into the Kaziranga National Park and fits this whole area with water of uh, this basin. And as you know, Kaziranga is very famous for its uh, famous Indian one-horned rhino. There are about 2,400 rhinos, and you, some of you must have seen these rhinos in Kaziranga in good numbers. And this, this park is also famous for beautiful um, wild elephants, the Tuskars. Sometimes, yeah, this photograph you can see, sometimes you see actually five to six Tuskars moving around uh, in one group uh, across the park. If you are lucky, you should be able to see that. Um, in this in this river basin, we are working in the in four villages uh, um, in in detail, but it, we have some more other uh, some other villages where we have started working. Rongtara is a village which is at about 300 uh, meter altitude, and then three villages next to each other at the base of the hills: Homeningti, Hamalekte, and Chandrasing Rongpi. And this is the Kohara town. Uh, you must have been here, some of you must have been here at some point of time when you were in Kaziranga. And the tourist complexes are located somewhere here. Given that Kohara, Kaziranga is just about uh, three to four kilometers from the villages, there was no tourism activity in this area until recently. And you won't believe from all these villages, only two persons are engaged in tourism business, which is a million dollar business. Uh, uh, in, in Kaziranga, although some um, tourist facilities will say ecotourism or, you know, uh, which promotes local tourism, you will be you will be very surprised to know this uh, as we have done this analysis earlier. And uh, also, these landscapes is having some beautiful birds. Um, I'm sure you will be able to see this, uh, these birds whenever you visit, and I'm, I'm sure you have seen this, some of these. Um, uh, Blue-throated barbet is a very common species across this area, and uh, they are very noisy all the time. You can hear them if you, even if you don't see them, but very easy to see them. So I will also give you a quick statistics of the villages. Uh, the the name of the villages are Rongtara, Pumeningti, Hemalek, and Sambrasingri, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, the population is very low in Karbi Amlong. There are about 137 households and approximately 700 uh, people living in these villages. I'll come to another statistics later on. But before that, the people uh, in, in these areas, uh, uh, living in these areas are predominantly Karbis. There are a small population of uh, tea tribes uh, uh, in these areas, as well as uh, Nepali community, uh, but mostly predominantly Karbis. And, and the river the, and, the, and, and the settlement, that's all what is we are talking about here today and how this uh, culture has developed at, at, around Karbi Hills. Um, uh, the, the mostly practice June cultivation, which is less and burn cultivation. And there, is, there, there are very small patches of flat lands, which is used for uh, rice, uh, rice cultivation. Um, as you might see in this, in this uh, slide, where the green lush um, uh, paddy field uh, has, uh, has been developed. And then on the backdrop, you have the village and the uh, hills of uh, Karbi Anglom. Um, the agriculture, particularly here, um, uh, people don't do much of vegetable cultivation, only rice. And then the jhum cultivation, which is uh, main production center of uh, green vegetables for the communities and for the market. I'll come to some of the products. And this is a typical jhum opening, you know, uh, when, when they start, uh, you know, um, 
uh, preparing the Zoom land, uh, Zoom plot uh, around the, uh, in the month of January, December even. Uh, they move into this plot and select as a as a cluster. Two three families will go and select a plot uh, which is probably one hectare to 1.5 hectares, and they will cut the uh, vegetation from that plot. And then in the month of March, they will burn this patch to create the opening and uh, start cropping in the month of uh, April, May onwards. So in a Zoom opening, this Zoom will be used for first year. Second year, there will be secondary products. And then third year onwards, this will be a Zoom fellow. There will be no use of this Zoom at all. Second year onwards, it starts growing. And the Zoom fellow goes through a very long process of uh, succession and growth of uh, different types of vegetation and forest. And uh, by 15, 20 years, this become uh, ready again for another zoom patch uh, zoom opening uh, these areas are of course having beautiful bird species uh, like moose lark and uh, in this in these communities if you see this uh, study which we carried out before we conduct our work uh, in this area about 122 households have been involved in ntfp collection and and there are about 61 households, almost 50% are involved in Zoom cultivation. So our objective uh, of working here is that we don't want to stop Zoom right away. And we wanted to work with this community so that we can minimize the harmful effect of Zoom uh, on the river basin. And our indicator for all our work is the, is the Kindu Langso River, the Kohora River, and its water quality and water uh, discharge capacity. We want to see how Water discharge changes over a period of time uh, due to interventions that uh, we and other government departments carry out in this area. Uh, purpose is um, value of ecosystem has decreased over time. Since 1950s, the value of these uh, this forest has gone down. Uh, this whole ecosystem has gone down. How we know that? Uh, when we interviewed local communities, the elderly people, uh, they say that, uh, you know, Around 50s to 1970s, 1970s, they are aware about uh, uh, you know chest deep uh, water in the river, but now there is only one feet water left. Uh, so that's a drastic change of water discharge uh, from the river. And when we ask them why is so, they said, "Oh, the most of the forests are gone from this uh, from this area, and so there is not much water left in the upstream, you know, in the hills, and that's why there is less water coming." And also the river has silted up uh, quite a bit, uh, almost two to three feet, feet at places. And, and just to tell you that the river water is not used for big irrigation or big uh, water supply projects. So the river water is as it is almost, except local use. Um, the forest, the primary forest of this area is completely lost. Whatever we have is mostly secondary forest. And then, uh, as I said again, the water uh, water loss from the river is about 60%. The economy of the area is a Zoom product, which helps them only six to eight months to sustain after doing so much of hard work. And rest of the six to four months by these families, they are dependent on other activities. And this is the period actually when they go into debt, financial debt, and they'll, they take loan from and importantly, there is no financial institutions almost uh, helping these communities. And most often they take loan from middlemen whom they supply the Zoom products like king chili or other vegetables or betel nut. And that's where they are exploited. Uh, even I'll give an example. If the king chili, which is the hottest chili in the world, is about 600 to 700 rupees a kilo in the market, they will have to give it to the middleman for 300 to 400 rupees, almost half the price. So that's where they get exploited because they took a loan, cash loan from the middleman. So we are trying to reduce that so that they become financially more empowered and they don't need to go to a middleman for money and they can keep a good price. Uh, they can set a good price for their product. Quality of life has significantly changed compared. I mean, um, uh, compared to. It has changed, but it is compared to rest of the country or rest of the uh, state. There are very, very minimal, uh, uh, you know, insignificant uh, change over there. Uh, education: they are poor, they are ridden by poverty. There are no institutions nearby to for better education. 
so they will have to go to further areas. Uh, children will have to be put in a hostel or in somebody's family's house for their higher studies or even uh, mid-level studies. So these are these are the purpose why we started our project in Kirby Hills. And as I explained, the Kirby Hills are very, very important for the Kaziranga landscape, the Kaziranga World Heritage Site, for the rhinos, for the elephants, for the swamp bears. So our approach here is uh, community-based. So we, we consulted with the communities before we uh, you know, do any interventions. We wanted to know what are the problems from the stakeholders. We did task group discussions. We, did, we collected household information from most of the household. Then we issued, uh, we identified the issues, uh, what they are facing and prioritized them. Then did a need assessment uh, of individual beneficiaries, what they need, what they want to do, what is their expertise. And then we identified, um, you know, sustainable interventions, what should go into. Then again, we went back and, and selected, uh, you know, um, uh, multiple beneficiaries or individual beneficiaries as a group or as, uh, as individual for different interventions. Um, then we started working with the communities, or with the beneficiaries uh, from there on. So this, this is a long process. From 19, uh, eight, uh, 2018 to 2020, two years we have continued this process a um, number of times uh, so that we are not wrong in planning the whole process of community-based national resource management. Uh, in conservation livelihood uh, in this area, we we promote uh, our interventions are sustainable organic farming we are trying to help improvise the zoom um, uh, zoom production and zoom cultivation we have the pb biodiversity business which is a is a is a uh, local community based business model to uh, promote and market products from these areas then ecotourism is another intervention uh, institution building is very important uh, we started building small rural institutions like uh, village level natural resource management committees and interestingly in these villages there are uh, very few uh, village level institutions uh, uh, except religious institutions there was uh, no village level institutions so we thought we thought we will start with a community based natural uh, village based natural resource management committee and also we have a basin area management committee to take larger um, uh, a larger view of the basin river basin and take decisions at higher level. Then capacity building of the beneficiaries um, at various levels, mostly hand-holding and hands-on training, as well as uh, um, uh, uh, as well as uh, exposure visits to different areas. Outreach about natural resources, uh, about uh, literacy, about financial literacy, about women issues, child development issues. All these we have taken into consideration as a holistic uh, outreach activity, uh, outreach program. Uh, as part of the national farming, we have uh, in, we have involved the communities uh, in in doing winter vegetable cultivation. As you know, Kaziranga has number of uh, lodges and facilities, and there is big demand for vegetables. Uh, most of the vegetables are coming from uh, at least 100, 150 kilometers away from Kaziranga, which also causes the uh, increase of the cost. But if they are locally produced, they can be marketed easily. And uh, about uh, about 60, 70 families were involved in this farming. And uh, in our experimental phase, 16 to 18 families did very good uh, in, in vegetable farming. Actually, they never thought uh, of using their homestead garden, homestead uh, area, which is very big, actually. They have about, uh, most of the families uh, are having about uh, two to three hectares of land, which is very rare in Assam condition, but these are hill areas. so. They are using only a very small part of that land for agriculture. Uh, so we are we are trying to see how we can you know promote this uh, natural farming with them, and we are learning a lot uh, with the communities here. Um, uh, there is also uh, in the national in the sustainable national farming we have uh, we have ensured food and financial security. How? So these communities who are producing these green vegetables, uh, they are consuming themselves and partly they are selling in the market. So they are getting financial benefit as well as uh, you know food security of eating good quality uh, food. Um, we are also teaching them how to scientifically uh, do land preparation and then do the agriculture. These are, this is a bit new for them because they are 
practice, their practice is to do Zoom cultivation mostly. In Zoom, you don't need to do this. You just cut the area, and then um, based on the suitability, you just show the seeds, and they will start growing in the monsoon. So uh, here you can see some of the some of the beneficiaries selling their produce in the market, uh, and when we talk to them, how they feel about it, they said this is for the first time they are doing, and they are very happy. So in in Zoom cultivation, we try to uh, provide them uh, with uh, improved variety of rice, which is uh, the research was carried out by uh, Regional Agriculture and Research Center in Defo, who has provided uh, a small quantity of uh, uh, different varieties of improved rice. And they like this variety of rice because they produce uh, in larger quantity, at least six to seven times more than the traditionally used variety. And then they also uh, can cut this rice uh, in, in about three months, uh, reducing loss because of uh, elephant raiding, elephant crop raiding or other animals. Um, even when they did it first time, they did not realize that rice is already uh, ready to cut because they were waiting uh, for another month to harvest the rice. So now they know how when to harvest and uh, what is it? Uh, um, yeah. So so uh, as you know, um, uh, this area is uh, um, Assam is very famous for birds. Uh, over five hundred species of birds. Come and see this at some point of time. Um, as we said, we have a Pirbi um, biodiversity business model. The Pirbi helps the local communities to process products, different products, and uh, market it into the to, into the national level, hopefully international market. You can see some of these pictures where communities are processing various products, agricultural products, as well as NTFP um, and uh, um, farming compost, 100% natural farming compost, handmade tea. Uh, is a very very good, very quality product and very good product which is coming into the market. Uh, also, the handlooms, handloom products are coming into the market uh, through this initiative. Um, I hope you'll be able to see this soon um, uh, in the in the website or or uh, in a store in Kaziranga. Um, as we said, we work with the we also work with the community uh, women. They are our primary targets. Um, they're 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 very very busy women. They do all household chores uh, in the uh, in the home, and even then they manage to spend a couple of hours or an hour a day to uh, weave beautiful clothes. So those clothes are usually worn by them, wore by them, uh, and they wear those clothes. But we thought of uh, you know converting some of these into um, you know, beautiful uh, sling bag. This can be used for getting uh, small uh, stuff when you are going out. Um, so they they were trained uh, not to weave. They know about weaving. They were trained how to make this, how to tailor this, and how to measure di measure different sizes of bags. They don't use. They always use the stick, and and the measurements are not always good. So we have taught them how to do it. We have also taken them for exposure trip to see how different natural fibers and natural dye can be used for dyeing their clothes. They make beautiful clothes. Um, in the ecotourism sector, we have, uh, that's what I want to speak here um, for the next few minutes. Uh, in the ecotourism sector, we have been working with them since uh, 2018 January. Uh, that is the first intervention we started because we knew that uh, that is more potential. Uh, as you all know, because of the COVID situation, 2020 has been a very challenging uh, period for all these communities, not because there was uh, no tourism or less tourism. There was never tourism, but they had a lot of linkages of uh, of marketing and selling products or coming into the villages and working, coming into the other villages and working. Um, uh, they lost that uh, livelihood. So uh, there is a very interesting uh, observation here that we made. Uh, during the lockdown, there was severe scarcity of uh, vegetables, um, fish, meat, and vegetables in the plains of Assam. Uh, but you won't believe the Karbi communities which were living in these villages where we were working, they had about 16 to 17 vegetables at their disposal. Most of them were wild vegetables. And they had no issues with this uh, vegetable crisis in that whole period of time. So uh, you can really imagine what was the situation during lockdown period. Uh, because of the COVID-19. Um, in ecotourism sector, this is a big team actually. We we are helping them in the guest relation at this moment. 
we hope we'll be able to transfer this over a period of time once the training and capacity building is complete. So there is a homestay, homestay and homestay food, uh, home food, homemade food. Uh, Kindu Langso SHG, SHG stands for Self Help Group. They manages the homestay and food. Uh, there is a trekking, trekking and lunch uh, program, which we call it Ingnam Kenka. Um, it's a local carby name, meaning walking in the forest. I'll come to that. Lankiri Self Help Group uh, uh, works on uh, with for this particular purpose. Then whenever there is uh, gas coming, the, the dishes, we don't use plastic or thermocol dishes. The dishes are made of uh, leaves, which is locally made by an Omen SHG, which is again culturally an important practice by Nepali women, women from the Nepali community. So they make these dishes for us um, uh, in our ecotourism facility, and they get money out of that. And those who bring the leaves, they get money out of out of this whole. And from the community, we have village natural resource uh, management committees and SSGs. They contribute to the whole community development program. And then for nature again, village uh, natural resource management committee uh, comes in and gives input in uh, ecosystem restoration uh, that is working for nature. So this is the big team that we have uh, uh, in the in the in the place. Um, uh, here. In ecotourism sector, we started the program called Journey for Learning. So it's an experiential uh, learning uh, program with NASA wildlife ecosystem people that started in 2018. We have the uh, rural homestay and NASA learning. And also, very importantly, we, we do participatory academic field work for different institutions. That's how they earn a good amount of money from these institutions. For example, in the of forest management, Shomaya Vidya Vihar has already made several. Uh, and all this provides sustainable alternative livelihood to communities. How I will come back, you know, in in, in, in short period. So I'll just quickly take you to the Ingnam Kenkam, the, the, uh, the initiative, which is very amazing and very uh, inter interesting, very experiential for people who are visiting. So it's walking in the woods of Karbi Hanglongs. It was not open until recently. I'm sure some of you have been here and you have not been able to walk in Karbi and Long. So uh, because of the community's initiative and our intervention that uh, we promoted this and we talked to them, they are now uh, ready to take people into the hills and you can take a long walk in the forest. So we this all, uh, this track is basically uh, around a stream called uh, Langkiri. Langkiri means find the water find the stream because the water of the stream is not visible. Most places it is hidden under the boulder and it flows under the big, big boulders. So you can always hear the resonance of the water, the sound of the water under the boulder, which is a fantastic sound, you know? And then you can converse with the forest in these, uh, uh, along the stream. And uh, there are a lot of gift of NASA, wild edibles, so during this tra track, you collect some wild edibles as your experience, you know, uh, you, the local communities will tell you which is what and what is to be eaten, how to, how it is to be eaten. And then, of course, the real critters of the forest, the birds, uh, there are about uh, three to 400 species of birds in this area. Uh, you already seen some of the pictures uh, in this presentation. And then bamboo is the life here, uh, living in and out of bamboo. Uh, you, you, you can see the how, how communities, the household are entirely dependent on bamboo uh, for for almost everything in, in their life. Um, in fact, the food which is cooked, uh, if in this picture you can see the yummy food, all cooked in bamboo notes. The water is served in bamboo notes. And then the food is also uh, kept in bamboo notes. Uh, then we have, a, we have a small program in, within the track called Hug a tree to be more happier, you know. Uh, uh, hugging a tree makes you more happier. It's, it's a scientifically proven, um, you know, work. And uh, you can feel how farmers work and how terrible uh, their life is, how hard their life is, you know, uh, living out of a mandu. Mandu is the small hut in a in a jungle where they live almost eight months a year uh, to, to start and to grow and to protect the protect the crops from uh, wild animals. <clears throat> so uh, in, this track is not very difficult. This is a moderate 100 to 150 meter uh, tram uh, altitude track. 
and except few locations you do with hard climb, but that's not impossible. It's about seven to eight kilometers, starting from the village and coming into in the village, uh, walking into some fantastic forest uh, with waterfalls, water pools, and an amazing uh, lunch uh, in the forest itself, uh, which is always surprising for visitors whoever is coming. And um, the, the the program takes about ten to twenty five people usually. Um, uh, uh, I can share the phone number with you on the chat box if you want to visit or the email ID. Um, here you can have the experience of uh, working with the communities to cook, the how they cook. And then uh, the if you are a tea drinker, you must drink the tea from a bamboo node. It's amazing. It's amazingly tasty. So in this picture, uh, the participants were making, uh, preparing the rice to put in the bamboo node and, and cook. So I'll come to small statistics of how our ecotourism intervention has been helping the communities. Yes, as I said, there has been a stress period uh, all through 2020 except the month of December when some local tourists uh, were visiting the area. We could manage some local tourists to come and stay in this homestay. Um, these are the uh, different homestays uh, who has made money uh, over the last uh, three years, I would say. Um, uh, it's it's not proportional to uh, all because some of them have number of more number of homes. But we, want, we always try to you know, make it uh, that every household get some share of the visitors coming into the villages particularly when we manage we manage the guests we manage the guests in a sense we the guests communicate with us and then we bring them to them and the most interesting part and most unique part of this model this ecotourism model is that after all expenses whatever is the net profit that is split into different parts so that's what communities have agreed so there is a 25% profit share. 25% of the money will go for individual equal profit share. Then 30% of the money of the net profit will go for capital investment. For example, if they need uh, utensils, if they need other equipments for ecotourism purposes, or maybe they can use some of this money for helping repairing their homestay or making um, improvement in the homestay, 30% will be save for that purpose and then there will be a savings of uh, 25 percent which is not to be used this will be saved in the shg's bank account so that they can use this to get more loan from financial institutions and we have a 10 percent share for biodiversity 10 percent share for community and then this biodiversity 10 percent share whatever will be the amount at the end of the year will be used for eco restoration purposes or um, orient uh, or uh, awareness purposes, but mostly for NASA NASA building NASA uh, or NASA restoration, uh, and community share will go for any purposes that community need. You know, uh, whatever they want to do. Maybe they will build a community water purification system in future, or maybe they will uh, you know repair the road which is very bad in condition, or maybe they will build a community house uh, for meetings and other purposes. So this unique model, uh, this kind of profit share uh, makes it very unique. Uh, in most of the ecotourism, I don't know if you can see this or not. Uh, what is the future uh, here? Um, in future, we we would like to we see that ecotourism has a huge potential in the Karbi Hills because whenever as a tourist you come to Kaziranga, other than making two safaris or going to the orchid park or going into a tea garden, there is hardly anything. So you cannot walk in Kaziranga National Park because it's restricted. So Carby Hills, uh, walking in Carby Hills can bring a big potential for a big opportunity for the, for the tourists visiting. The area is strategically located close to the major tourist hub, as I said, in Eastern India, the Kaziranga. So uh, easy for the communities to get the tourists interested to come to the airplace. The tourists don't have to uh, travel a long distance to go to Carby Hills. It's just there. Ecotourism models based on learnings can be implemented in other areas of Kirby Hills as well as in Northeast India. That's the future we are looking forward. The sustainable revenue model can simultaneously support uh, sustainable livelihood, management of biodiversity and community development. These three things can be supported uh, by the model. 
uh, of course, this is not the only thing, but there are many other many other components or interventions are implemented, being implemented here. From every uh, implementation, every revenue earned, there is a share for community and biodiversity. It's not just for the for the family. So we are trying to ensure that uh, by motivating them as we are as we are progressing. Um, more understanding about biodiversity, people their interaction is required and our studies are our academic studies are our continuous process we have been studying the here for last three years and we are continuing that we have more intense and more uh, you know more uh, uh, elaborate studies coming in future how we can learn about the forest and their and its interaction with the communities because the degraded forest patch by patch we will be we hope we'll be able to restore uh, to the 1950s uh, standard, uh, 1970s standard, with the help of the communities. Um, yes, uh, some more beautiful pictures of birds. Uh, the green bill malpoha, quite uh, common to see in this landscape, and uh, black-crested bulbul, uh, very easy sighting. We have mountain tailor bird as well. And uh, I don't want to take uh, more time. It will be good to interact uh, probably as I'm ending this. Uh, but I would like to acknowledge uh, the village committees uh, who are integral part of this program. And they have been very supportive to us. The Forest Department of Caribbean Autonomous Council. The Soil Conservation Department are also, the department is also very helpful in our implementation project. Implement. Agriculture Department of Caribbean Long is uh, an, a, a collaborator. They have been supporting us with various resources. RARS, uh, these two institutions, uh, Difu and Nogao, they are under Assam Agricultural University. They are helping us in the agriculture sector, including Krisi Vigyan Kendra uh, of Difu. Uh, the SHGs, uh, the, the leaders of SHGs, the member of SHGs, amazing people. They are just, uh, uh, they are just um, you know, very nice and very naive uh, working for this, uh, for their own you know, sustenance with our interventions that we are supporting. Uh, Kohora Karbi Society is a new organization that has formed in the last um, six months. They are part of this, they have been working. The village school, there is a, there is a small uh, village school which provide uh, education to the communities, uh, the children's here. They are a, they are a wonderful uh, uh, you know, family for us. Uh, this Sandra Singh Rompi Memorial High School, which has provided us uh, a space and facility uh, that we have our community center, the nursery. We have a, we have a, um, a forest regeneration purpose nursery, which produces a lot of uh, seedlings every year. And last year, in fact, we we planted about uh, eight to ten thousand trees in the forest, uh, which are of uh, native varieties. Uh, Tespur University are part of this. Don Bosco University, RFRI, Rainforest Research Institute, Jorat. They're all part. And thanks to our long-term donors and uh, earlier donors, Duford, US Fish, Disney, Wild Landscapes, for all their continued support to our program. I hope we will continue to receive support from uh, different donors, like-minded donors. And just to conclude, to say that Kaziranga without Karbianglong Hills is nowhere. We have to save Karbianglong Hills and Kaziranga as one unit. And we are confident that in future, the Kaziranga, Kaziranga animals, uh, which are long range migrating animals, probably one day will be able to go to Myanmar over Karbi Hills, then over Naga Hills, and then into Myanmar. So that's the future, that's the uh, goal of uh, this program, connecting Kaziranga to Myanmar. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm going to share, and uh, it's over to Mohit. This was absolutely an eye-opening, Dr. Philos. I am absolutely bowled over with your presentation. I think for me, it's very important that, um, you know, I've been through Karbi Anglong a few years ago, and I've, I've traveled through this area, and I also spent a couple of nights there. They're the most beautiful people on this planet, and they look after you, you know. So in, on one instance, it was, um, we were visiting uh, a local house and the entire village got together and they were putting um, you know pieces of cloth you know hand woven cloth around their necks as gifts and we got fantastic food to eat you know they we were like you know they rolled out the red carpets for us 
Now, the interesting part is that whatever that you do for their livelihood, for their, um, uh, you know, alternate uh, means of uh, sustenance and everything, you know, for wildlife first, it's going to be a big boon because if you stop Zoom or if you give different ways of agriculture and different kinds of livelihood, then your water level will go up in, in the Gora area, right? Which is so important for elephants and for for um, the wildlife there and for the, for the rhino and for the survival of um, this particular park, which is uh, the most important habitat of India, you know, for one horn rhino. So, so your work is really, really significant um, in terms of wildlife conservation. So while we have to work with the communities and work with the people, um, you also, so it's got, you, you might call it trickle effect, but it's got direct effect on, on the park. Which is uh, which is such a wonderful thing to do right now. The the second thing that I wanted to talk about before you start answering other people's questions on this, when we were talking about the financial aspects of uh, uh, you know of the people here, I seriously think that I would like to bring in one expert to talk to the community about how to make value investments. Because when they start to put money into equity, and as low as 500 rupees a month, maybe a household, maybe a community or whatever, it grows exponentially. And then, you know, the, the statistics are that over 10 years or more, you get 15% rate of interest, which is phenomenal. So I would like to, uh, uh, you know, to ask you to, to look into this aspect where we can then train a few people how to help them make those investments you know in sips so that whatever is being earned by them it grows like a financial wall for them to lean back against you know so there's a there's a, there's a positive sign and then that money will be readily available to them for anything big that they want to do over a period of time so it's it's each by each bit, bit by bit you know building up financial um uh, you know Based for themselves. So over to you for question and answers. There's a question by um, by by uh, some friends who said so. Deepak uh, Bharali has said something in the beginning. Could you could you repeat your question? So he said, is it not possible to teach them terrace cultivation in place of Zoom, as now done in many hills of northeast area, northeast region? Would you like to answer that? Um, just a moment. I'm just trying to see the question. Deepak Bharali. Okay. Uh, is it not possible to teach them terrace cultivation in place of Zoom as now in many areas of countries? Okay. So Deepak um, uh, Bharali, first of all, uh, I don't want to debate on the good and bad of part of the, the Zoom cultivation. And, uh, and it's important that uh, the cursor is taken care um, uh, when you plan something. So the Zoom has not, um, you know, come up over one year, two years, or one decade. It has been there for generations, for for thousands, probably hundreds of years, maybe thousand. You know, we don't know. So you cannot change this in in one go. And uh, we have seen that not all terrace cultivations are also great. You know, and in case of Zoom cultivation in this landscape. Uh, although it has harmful impact, but there are positive impacts of Zoom as well. I'm not again. I'm saying again, it, there is no debate uh, to uh, to you know stand on any of this side. So, for example, I uh, I I did not know. I don't know anything about Zoom. First of all, so I asked the communities when you do Zoom, how it helps the wild animals, you know, and you got a very fantastic ecologist answer. I was I was dumb by that, you know, and the communities, the, the people who are doing Zoom, they told me, you know, um, uh, uh, they call some of them call me Firosa. So Firosa, you know, when we do Zoom, we cut down the trees. Yes, some trees we leave only only the branches are cut, but mostly we uh, we we cut the you know small trees, 
and immediately after that all seedlings come out in the second year and unfortunately third year fourth year bamboos overwhelm and that's why other trees most other trees cannot grow other than those which are left standing you know they, they can uh, foliate again so what they said this process we provide new vegetation for the elephants and for the um, gaurs and for the sambars who are using this landscape if we stop doing zoom the forest will become all you know good forest and there will be no no food or fodder for these elephants and 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 uh, gaur so what they will do they will come and eat our paddy down there in the in the paddy field or they will come and destroy our cash crops like betel nut or or mango or uh, you know banana tree so that was actually an ecologist answer you know i i was just uh, surprised that then they have uh, this minute observations of animal behavior their for the uh, uh, foraging behavior and you see uh, the another important point is here they need time to change from one to another so when if we try to push the way government department has early without understanding this um, uh, push for uh, terrace cultivation but those terraces are dead now there is no sign of any terraces uh, millions of rupees were uh, were invested to uh, create terraces but before that we have to make them ready for terraces so that some of them can use terraces but forget about terrace the household the homestead area which is i said almost two to three hectares of homestead the backyard uh, they have and and maybe almost one hectare area of uh, uh, plot around the house they are hardly using it they are only putting some uh, betel nut tree and then they are going into the zoom areas because where from they will get the care they need on every day every week the other things will not give them the tree will not give them a cash every day so we have to take in care of all these uh, before we think about the change over so i i don't know i could answer your question but i thought i will explain this as well that was wonderful uh, so tony is asking uh, what's the best time to visit assam kaziranga and manas uh, sorry i did not understand that so tony is yeah. asking what is the best time to visit assam kaziranga and manas the whole year is actually this time but uh, it depends on if you, if you want to come as a tourist to see wild animals in kaziranga i would say february march and first half of april is the best uh, because i have been working there for quite some time uh, february 15 to march 15 is the most suitable period i am sure mohit will agree with me because that's when the new shoots of the grasses come after burning and visibility of uh, uh, animals are very high uh, but for karbi hills if you want to go into karbi hills or stay there live there you can come anytime uh uh there there is no wildlife sighting almost but you can see their park marks you see their uh, trails the fantastic forest the people the culture the food you can do that anytime so there was one place when i was going to karpi where we stopped and there was a troop of gibbons you know there was a there was a large uh, population but not very large a uh, small population of gibbons along the way before we entered karbi i think um, so what was that place called like, i can't remember there was some uh, old japanese remnants of the you know of the war lying ah, around okay maybe you went to singhasan hills that is the yeah. uh, tallest hill range uh, in karbi hills about okay. 1500 meter so that's uh, that's singhasan but enter karbi hills has a log given the project villages we are working we have um, uh, few troops of a few pairs of hulog gibbons out there as well including uh, kaplan gur so okay, though, they, you can hear them from the from yeah. the homestay you stay you can hear them every morning excellent so Just my friend Gitan so my friend gitanjali is here and she's saying the products that are made are they available for outsiders including the bamboo tea Yes, uh, the products are um, being made available from this season onwards. Uh, there has been some test marketing that is completed, and uh, now the products will be available for online ordering or over telephone or over email. Uh, the team which is uh, working with this product are working very hard 
to bring in a number of products from these villages uh, for for niche marketing i believe by may june onwards uh, there will be at least 20 30 products that will be available uh, for the people to buy and that will that will really help the communities and uh, to understand that they can do something different as i said it's important for this niche marketing because uh, they are exploited by the middleman so we can remove that middleman and give direct linkages uh, to the market and they can get more money for unit um, items they produce excellent um would you like to tell everyone um, how they can be more involved with your work with you and mm -hmm. how they can participate uh, to take your cause forward uh, you know all the work that you're doing how how are how everyone can really be involved with you yeah um yeah. Uh, of course we would like to welcome you as a volunteer in our project so you can write to us uh, if you are we can share you more detail about the project uh, unfortunately we don't have a website at this moment to put all this we will be doing that uh, forgive us because we are on the ground mostly uh, i just traveled last three days constantly and came some, somehow managed to catch hold of this uh, this seminar so we don't get much time if you are a writer dear sitting in this uh, in this room uh, please come and help us writing all these and and put it on a blog put it on a website or prepare a few leaflets or pamphlet for us that's one way to contribute live with these communities understand them and then innovate whatever you can and contribute for their benefit for the benefit of the nasa for the benefit of the you know forest so there are many ways and number of ways i don't want to list all those just send me an email or uh, send me a whatsapp message uh, uh, i will discuss in details how you can contribute there's so, all the ways uh, yeah, yeah. absolutely so i am now making a, a checklist for ecotourists you know what they can do and how a tourist can get converted into an ecotourist so once that checklist is complete i will share that with you which you can share with people who want to come and volunteer and mm -hmm. this one capacity uh, is a big chapter in itself you know if a person can take your cause forward he becomes an eco tourist because yeah, he's exactly. then he's then he's not looking at one off um, you know vacation or it's not a, a thing that he wants to experience and take off his things it's a life cycle he builds a lifelong relationship with the community with people and it he may not go there again that's okay but he continues to you know spread the cause he continues to talk about that all his life you know so that's my that's my take on being an eco tourist so that would be fantastic yeah so once my 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 checklists are ready and my ways are ready my sops are ready i'm happy to share them with you yeah i would i would love to let me know mohit whatever you need uh, uh, to add to this and uh, we will also try to make more uh, experiential uh, for the tourists who are coming here as eco tourists and uh, staying in this villages itself is an eco tourist you know uh, those who want to stay in a four walled you know uh, tiled house there are many lodges in kaziranga those who want to experience village a rural life a community you know uh, a tribal community there is homestay you know um, so the toilet may not be as good as of a star hotel but there is a nice little toilet you know the bathroom may not be uh, fully tiled or with a jacuzzi shower but there is a nice little bathroom to take a, a shower with cold water in monsoon uh, in in summer and warm water which is with firewood uh, they, they make warm water for with firewood they don't have a geyser you have to experience that as well so that is still with eco tourists you know staying there and, and feeling and experiencing it, eating with them together you know on a on a dining table the, the amazing food they serve the way they serve you will be just Oh, it's, I am blessed for two to three days. I'm staying here. Absolutely, I have experienced it, so I hundred percent vouch for whatever you're saying. Good. So I think it's uh, it's one hour now. We've um, yeah. uh, you know we 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 finished within our limits. It's um, absolutely wonderful. And then friends, he's put his coordinates here. Tomorrow you'll get the replay link as well, which you please share with your friends who have missed it. 
and I will add Feroz's contacts to that autoresponder, that uh, sorry, that replay link as well, uh, and stay in touch with him for whatever else that you ever want to do in Carby, and uh, you know, experience the wisdom, the knowledge that the local people have there. You may not be able to contribute very much, but they'll contribute to your lives. That's for sure. So, the, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you.